Welcome, uh, I'm Ian Stefferman. This is uh, our weekly discussion on app development. Uh, I'm here with Brian Morrell, CEO of PlacePlay, and Roby Ganguly of AppTentive. Uh, Want to give a quick intro? Yeah, so as Ian said, I'm Ryan Morrell, CEO of PlacePlay, and we help uh, app developers increase their in-app advertising revenue with targeted advertising. And I'm Roby Ganguly of AppTentive, and we help app developers connect with their customers in their apps. We know that the app stores are a great place for distribution, but they're the last place for a customer conversation, so we fix that in under 15 minutes. Great, and at Mobile Dev HQ, we do App Store Optimization, which is SEO for mobile apps, so we help app developers make more highly in App Store Search. Uh, so, in this segment, we're gonna talk a little bit about tablets. Um, specifically, we've heard a couple of uh, news sources talking recently that Apple has actually increased its market share with the iPad. Uh, which has led to a obvious decrease in market share for others, including the Kindle Fire. Um, you want to talk a little bit about where we think these these changes are happening, why it's, where it's coming from, why it's happening? Um, so my personal belief is some of it is just uh, product age. So the Kindle Fire at this point is a little long in the tooth. It's probably due for a refresh. And at the same time, the iPad has a huge marketing budget behind it, has several models out there at several different price points, which is allowing a lot more consumers to self-select and broaden their association with Apple. Yeah. yeah. So, I'm not sure that this has anything to do with the competitors out there, and it just has more to do with how good of a job Apple's done and how much momentum they truly have. So, when, when I see new tablets come out, and I, you know people get excited about the Nexus 7, and, I, and I've owned two iPads and I go, I, I'm not even interested in trying that because I know my experience with the iPad is so fantastic that I'm never going to change it, right? So I, I think that's just the momentum and the, the user base they've already built is gonna be really hard for anybody to, to stop, I think. Um, and I think that the second big thing which um, is gonna be a challenge for anybody other than Amazon is the distribution, right? So when anytime Apple releases something, they have distribution. But boom, it's done. Amazon's the only other company that has that, right? So I'm, I know there's ways to buy the Google Nexus 7 tablet, but I don't I have no idea. <laughs> right? um, so it's like, where do you go? You probably go to Amazon, who's gonna push you their tablet instead, so. Yes, for me it's actually, it's, it's one of those 10x situations, right, where, let, let, let's talk about the, the web search, right, where Bing is actually a pretty good search engine, right, like, I, I, I like Bing when I use it, uh, but because it's not sort of 10 times the quality, it's not a huge game changer compared to Google, they really aren't able to, to rack up the usage there, and, and I feel like tablets is much the same way, iPad is out in front, and the Kindle Fire is actually pretty good, the Nexus 7 is actually pretty good, but they're not super game changers. Yeah. Um, and I, I think, uh, so one of our investors, Chris DeVore, had a blog post recently about what if Amazon came out with a phone where it was totally free, maybe even data or voice and data is free, and all that, and they're subsidizing everything and all they're charging for is content, right? Because that's Amazon's game, is content. Uh, and, I, and I should disclose as a former Amazonian, like I, I'm pro Amazon. Um, but it, it would be interesting to see how, if it's not going to be 10x for the Kindle Fire from a hardware standpoint, can they do something like a 10x disruptive change in the industry from a business model standpoint? Um, I think that would be useful. Yeah. I think, I, so I played with the Nexus 7, I actually am a really big fan, and I think part of the reason that I'm a fan is that the 7-inch form factor is really appealing, it sort of fits in your your hand and that's nice. There's also this aspect with the iPad of seriousness and almost like wanting to treat it delicately because it's this beautiful piece of machinery with really nice glass. Whereas the, the Nexus 7, it's $199, it's kind of plasticky and you can toss it on your couch and throw it on your, your, your counter or whatever. You're not necessarily worried, or at least I'm not, about breaking it so much as with my iPad. It's like yeah. setting it down. And I think that's that's a real opportunity to, to differentiate. You know where Apple's going to go, and you can say, well, for an everyday use, for somebody with a kid, maybe this is a this is a better thing to invest two hundred bucks in as opposed to a five hundred dollar piece of like maybe breakable machinery. Sure. Yeah, yeah, and I think kind of well, a I'd say what happens if they do a seven inch 
iPad, right? And I was just talking about it yesterday. Like, I would buy one. I have a 10 inch one, <laughs> but I would buy one for that exact reason. Uh, well, it's kind of smaller, and if I want to read, I'm happy to do it on a 7 inch iPad, not on a 10 inch iPad. Um, and I, I think the interesting battle really is kind of, I think, what you were touching on is not between Apple and Google, right? I'm, I'm not sure that's it. I think it's Apple and Amazon. Um, they're the only two companies with credit cards. They're the only two companies with distribution, um, and, and those things really matter. And and they're trying to sell the same stuff, right? Like I look at the Android market and go, I don't know what's going on there. That's a weird thing. But the Amazon App Store is getting really good. The content market's really good. So if they can fix the hardware to get it to at least a point where you're like, I feel pretty good about this, then I think that's a potential good challenger over the long term. Yeah. Uh, Great, so uh, let's talk about how the, the iPad and the Kindle Fire and the Nexus 7 and the changes in market share there affect app developers. Where should they be focusing their efforts? Is it just solely on iPad and iOS? Should they be doing Android stuff? If they do Android stuff, do they care about Amazon? That type of thing, what are your overall feelings on that? So, I mean, obviously, these things all depend on the size of the developer, right? Um, and what you're using as a development tool set. So if you were a small team and could develop for one platform, I'd go iPad. And I wouldn't even think twice about it for a lot of different reasons. So one, the market share is way bigger. Um, and two, people spend more money on iPad. That's uh, unequivocally true. Um, if you're trying to build like a brand strategy around your apps, so your Angry Birds, Cut the Rope, um, where you care much more about the connection to your characters than you do about a simple app, you're going everywhere, right? But if small, focus on one big platform first, and if you're successful, move on. That's what I'd do. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think the, the, the size difference and your resources is a really big driver of this. You've got enough resources to be experimenting and making sure that you're looking for broad platform coverage. You definitely should be picking up a Kindle Fire and developing for it because the ecosystem, like you said, of credit cards from Amazon is really quite promising. They have a lot of credit cards on file and all of the indications are that they're monetizing as well, sometimes better than the iTunes app store, so I think that's really good. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it's the number of bullets you've got in the chamber. So, you know, one of the interesting things we're seeing is that if you're going to be on both Android and iOS and you're making a tablet experience, because it's easier to ship apps into the Android environment, there's, there's less delays around that. People are actually shipping their first version of an app into Android, iterating quickly, and once they know they've really developed a premium experience that's worthy of their iPad opportunity, that's when they then port it to the iPad and ship something there. So that's, that's pretty cool use if you're gonna be on multiple platforms. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. So it's a lot like what people are doing by shipping to Canada first on iOS. And exactly. Not releasing worldwide. Yeah. Very interesting. And, and you know, I think one other one other aspect which you touched upon a little bit was around monetization. And so how how your app is going to monetize is actually I think an important factor of where you want to be distributing to. So if you're if you're a free app, Amazon App Store and the Kindle Fire doesn't have nearly the, the distribution that an iPad does. Uh, if you're monetizing with, with ads, you probably want to go iPad first. If you're doing a paid app or even an app purchases Amazon App Store actually might be a legitimate candidate there. They monetize really well for that type of stuff. Um, so thinking about how, how your app is going to monetize, I think, is actually important as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and clearly, you know, different audiences are, are and different audiences within um, a specific piece of hardware are more receptive to various items. Um, and as you mentioned, Kindle Fire is doing really well on, on monetization, but although it does have a smaller user base, um, where Android as a whole is a good option is advertising there, um, and iPad, in-app purchase and advertising also work. Right. Well, great. Well, thank you guys so much, and uh, I think this was really useful, and be sure to check out all of the other episodes and what's coming up next week as well. What is, what is your high-level take on Facebook's push into um, providing an advertising solution for developers? So, you know, I think at a very high level, to me, it's, it's super strategic for them. Um, they obviously...